Hi there, this is Esther at Stampin' Star Creations with a Christmas Stampathon 2021 challenge that we set over on Facebook. So this month's challenge was to make a frameable project. I'm using Merriest Moments and I'm going to introduce another stamp set later, but I wanted to show you this beautiful bundle which you can get dies with and embossing folders. And they all mix and match. So I'm using this intricate die to start with. And then I'm just going to poke out those tiny little pieces that sometimes get caught using my take your pick tool, which comes in very handy because you can swap around the heads. Then I'm placing that die cut shape and aligning it up into my embossing folder. And this fits in like a glove and it kind of snaps into shape. And then you can just fold the fold together tightly and then you go ahead and run this through your embossing machine. Then when it comes out it leaves this beautiful embossing around each of those leaves and we can get creating with this. Using Mossy Meadow initially to blend on some colour using a blending brush and I'm concentrating on the ferny type leaves that are on my paper. So the colours do blend together and it doesn't actually really matter for the final project but just to lay down some different shades of colour. Coming in next with Pear Pizzazz, so a lighter green to fill in some of those other rounded shaped leaves. And then for the holly I'm coming in with our darkest colour, Evening Evergreen. And the more ink you apply you can get some really lovely shading on your work. I'm going ahead and stamping out some Ponsettia and some holly and some fern or fur <laughs> and I spend the time die cutting these and it's so worth it just doing a whole bunch of stamping and die cutting and you've got these lovely shapes to play with. Using this gorgeous celebration dazzle paper and I've gone ahead and die cut some out of there and this rectangle comes with the set as well and it fits in neatly inside. I'm stamping it twice and offsetting it so I've got a lovely shadow effect. Here comes my peaceful uh, deer and with the matching punch and I'm stamping this in crumb cake with the two rabbits that come in the set. I'm stamping double so that I've got an extra card to make which will be similar to my frameable piece and that will be given away as a random act of kindness as part of the challenge. This set even comes with little dots on the end of the deer so I'm just putting it on the hind leg. Using my crumb cake blends to colour these in and just kind of eyeballing where I should put the colour and trying to think from memory where the lightest and darkest bits would be on the deer. And same with the rabbit, going down with the dark colour along the back and over its head along one side and then coming in with a lighter colour, leaving a bit of space at the front for a white tummy. And then fussy cutting this out, it's only a small piece so it's not too bad. I've got this frame which is, it said 6x6 six six inside but um, I think the actual frame is more like 8x8 eight eight or a bit bigger. And I've cut down some of this birch paper which comes again from our um, celebration offer. If you spend £45 you can get the paper for free. And just blotching on some spots around the edge, this really helps to give some movement. Now with a lot of these layers I'm affording to put it on on layers with sticky foam back so that when I come to add my pieces I can just slot them in behind. Because it's a box frame it doesn't matter about the depth. So putting my sparkly papers behind that main frame and then adding in those die cut foliage and matching them roughly up where they are on the uh, framed piece. So matching my die cut pieces to where they are roughly on the bit that I've already cut out and just tucking them in behind that sentiment. So I'm folding each piece um, to bend it a little bit to just give it a bit of movement and I'm just applying glue to the end to make sure it gets stuck behind each one. 
introducing the poinsettia and just lining up the deer to see where that should go. And with this pop of red, it really makes a difference to the whole picture. Adding in berries where there is holly and covering up a smudge that I had at the top. And just layering all those lovely pieces. I'm popping my rabbit or my hair just behind that holly at the top. I love the idea of this picture being a bit of a picture that you stare at and the more you look, the more you find. So with the deer as well, it got the dimensional treatment and I'm popping that up. So it got this lovely dimension going throughout the whole picture. And look at that, I can manage to get most of my backings on, the, on my uh, pokey tool. Great way just to pick them off. Here I'm showing you the depth on my piece of work. Then coming in to finish it off with a few of the sparkly flowers that I'd cut out. Again, this is all from that same merriest moment die set. Felt like that blank space needed filling, so I'm just swapping around some of the foliage left to see which fits better. And I felt like this, this fern one just helps me to have a nice curve following on from the other one underneath it. And then adding in some extra holly. And at this stage you're just filling any gaps that might look as if it needs something, like that gap on the side there. So because I put something in that side, it felt like I needed then something on the other side to balance it. So again, I've gone in with another fern piece. Coming in with these holiday rhinestones and I'm choosing the green. Now again, I just wanted the picture to be... Um, something that you look at and I don't want the gemstones necessarily to stand out by themselves and these lovely retired snowflakes just give this little glitz and glam when you turn the picture you just maybe get a glint of the light on the snowflakes just very subtle but it's about the little details just edging the edge with the crumb cake ink and a blending brush and then popping it in the frame for the first look here we go. Wow, when you frame a piece of your artwork, it just does something. It just makes it look really professional and finished. But because of the colour of the frame, I wasn't quite convinced. So I'm coming in with my white ink. Now, my white ink obviously needs re-inking. There's one patch of my ink which was particularly juicy. So I was able to use that to dab on my frame. And I'm just swiping this along my frame. It's a smooth surface, so it's not going to catch my ink. And it's just an easy way to apply that white ink. Then I'm using a blending brush just to fill in that gap in the inside where the wood was and where I couldn't reach with the ink. Because I didn't want to wait around for this to dry, it's particularly wet, sticky ink. I've heat treated it with my tool, my heat tool to try and get it dry a bit quicker. Okay, round two, and fitting the frame together. And there you go. I just think it takes away that stark wooden edge. I hope you've enjoyed the project today. I thoroughly enjoyed making this. Please do check out the Christmas Stampathon 2021 over on Facebook. Do like my page by uh, subscribing, thumbs up and comment below.